Hi students. Let's go over how to convert 3D information from a real object like this into something that you would see on a blueprint. So I'm going to put this little square of Lexan on the table. That's just going to hold the object up so I can draw. And let's say that we want to convert this 3D object into a blueprint. Put it on top of my rest. We're going to use something called the glass box theory. And lo and behold, I just happen to have a glass box. So we're going to put our glass box over the object. Now, to convert that 3D object to 2D, what I'm going to do is I'm going to project all of the edges onto the glass box. So I'll take my dry erase marker, and I'm looking directly down in, and I'm going to draw the edges that I see. I'm going to do that on each of the sides. So I'll look in. And this is how we're going to do the first half of the class. In the first half, you're going to be given a blueprint. You're going to have to give me back a solid model. This is going to be how I'm going to convey what I want for a model to you. Okay, so I'm projecting those edges onto the face. I'll do the same thing on this side. And I can do the back lastly. Free-handed, but you get the general idea of what I'm going after. So now, if I was going to turn that into a blueprint, what we're going to do is we'll take our glass box, we unfold the flaps, and as you can see, these are the views that would appear on a blueprint. Now, a couple important ideas here. You can see that the edges all line up. The edges also line up in this direction. Okay, That's very, very important. A lot of people lose points when we get to the drafting part of the class because they move the views all around. As you can tell from when I drew the edges on the glass, there's only one location for all of these views. Okay, Let's do a little more complicated one. So I'm going to clean off these images. And let's do something that has an internal feature, something a little more complicated than just the rectangular block. Okay, our glass box is nice and clean. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to do this little rectangle. As you can see, it has a hole in the center. So we're going to do the same process, but this time we're going to account for internal hidden features. So again, same thing, I'll put my glass box in place. I'm looking down and I'm tracing the outline, Oops. and I'm tracing the outline of the object in the glass box. This time, however, I need to account for that hole inside. To account for the hole, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a dashed line. And that represents a hidden edge. I can actually see the hole because I'm using clear parts. But if this were aluminum, something that's not transparent, you know, I would need this uh, dotted line to show me that the object is inside. Okay, so same thing. I'm going to do the back edge. And again, I can see the height 
of that hidden internal hole. So I'm going to use dashed lines. We'll do the front view. Now in this view, I can see the edges of the hole. So I'm going to just put a solid hole like that because I can see it. We'll do the other edge. And then do the back. We do the same process. We're going to unfold the flaps of our glass box. We'll lay it right over here. Now you can see what the views on a blueprint would look like if I want to represent this three-dimensional object with an internal feature. So I could have a front view like this. This will be my top view, my back view, and my two side views. Now, I, wanted, I want you to notice something. Generally in a blueprint, we annotate holes with something called a center mark. So on my blueprints, you're going to see a center mark, and it looks like this. It's like kind of the crosshairs in a rifle scope, if you're familiar with that. Okay, you do not need to draw the center mark when you're creating the sketches to make your parts. This is just a convention we use in drafting. Same thing when we have cylindrical faces. We almost always put a center line on cylindrical faces. You do not need to draw that when you make your model. Just draw the stuff that's actually going to create the solid edges. Okay. So over here, again, we should have center line, center line, and lastly our center mark. Okay. Now notice, all of these edges to first order line up, as do these edges, they all line up. The edges here, here, and here, they all line up because it's projected off the object into the glass box. When we get to drafting, I'm going to be very fussy about this. Okay, It does not make sense if you have something like this view right here off over here. Okay, That would not be a correct projection. So make sure that when we get to the drafting portion of this course, that your views always line up. Okay? Thank you for watching.